In this video, we hear from billionaire tech, mobile and Tesla CEO Elon Musk about his thoughts on degrees and the education system in general. No, it's not, it's, it, there's no need even to have a college degree oh, well, okay. at all, uh, or even okay. high school. The, um, I mean, if somebody graduated from a great university, that may be an, indi that may be an indication that they will be capable of great things, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, if you look at, um, say, people like uh, Bill Gates, or Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, these guys didn't graduate from college, college jobs, yeah. but if yeah. you had a chance yeah. to hire them, of course, that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just re looking just for evidence of exceptional ability, um, and if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it's likely that that will continue into the future. Mm -hmm. How I describe myself? Um, well, I, I mean, I, I seem to have a, a high uh, innate uh, drive. Um, and that's been true even since I was a little kid. You know, I uh, really had a very strong drive. Did all sorts of risky things when I was a kid that I, like, why did I do those things? They're crazy. <laughs> um, uh, I care a lot about the truth of, of things and trying to understand the truth of things. I think, so I think that's important. Um, you know, if you're gonna come up with some solution, then the truth is really, really important, I think. Um, I, I, I try to like, think of, I mean, it's, it's difficult to obviously come up with like things that are praised for oneself, you know, or like, it, there's, and there's bad and good here, but um, I think like sometimes they're just, like the things that seem quite clear and obvious to me, and I, I, it's, uh, they, I don't understand why they aren't so obvious to everyone. Um, sure. So how would you educate your five boys? Actually, I created a little school. <laughs> Yeah. What kind of school? Could you describe to us? Sure. It's, I mean, it's small. It's only got 14 kids now, and it'll have 20 kids in, in September. Um, it's called Ad Astra, which means to the stars. That's maybe a bit different from, from, from most other schools, is that there aren't any grades. There's no, there's no like, not grade one, grade two, grade three type of thing. And making all the children go in, in the same grade at the same time, like an assembly line. I know. Um, you know, because some people love English or languages, some people love math, some people love music, mm. and, uh, and they have different abilities at different times. It makes more sense to, to cater the education to match their aptitudes and abilities. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one principle. Um, another is that it's important to teach, uh, teach problem solving, or teach to the problem, not to the tools. Mm -hmm. So this would be like, let's say, um, you were trying to teach people about uh, how engines work, or you know, you could start by a, tr more, a more traditional approach would be to say, well, we're going to teach you all about screwdrivers and wrenches, and and you're going to have a course on screwdrivers, a course on wrenches, and all these things. And it's mm. this is a very difficult way to, to do it. A much mm. better way would be like, here's the engine. Now mm. let's take it apart. How are we going to take it apart? Oh, you mm. need a screwdriver. That's what the screwdriver is for. You need a wrench. That's what the wrench is for. Mm -hmm. um, and then a very important thing happens, which is that the relevance of the tools becomes apparent. So all your five boys are in that school? Yes. Until when? This is from preschool to... So far it's only one year old. <laughs> uh, uh, they like it. They like it? Yeah. And you want to keep them away from regular schools? No, I just didn't see that uh, the re regular schools, just they weren't doing the things that I thought should be done. Like, you know, those two principles, they weren't... Uh, adhering to those principles, so I thought, well, let's see what we can do. Maybe creating a school will be better. And um, I actually hired a teacher from the school they were at mm. who also agreed with me that there was a better way to do it. Have they surprised you in a way of their innovative thinking? Yeah, it seems to be going pretty well. Uh, I mean, the kids really love going to school. I think that's a, a mm. good sign. You know, I mean, I hated going to school when I was a kid. It was torture. Um, so. The fact that they, uh, like, they actually think vacations are too long, mm. like they want to go back to school. Wow. Yeah, exactly. That's weird. I know. Aids <laughs> or <laughs> people like that, what is it you have in common with them? Well, I mean, those are pretty different personalities, you know, between yeah. Gates and Jobs so and Allison. and success? Uh, well, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, all, all three of those were technologists, but with different types of skills. 
you know, Jobs was obviously very good with aesthetics, um, and uh, you know, he, he, he answered technology, of course, um, and he really answered what people wanted, even when they didn't know themselves. Um, and he was not afraid to you know, break boundaries, but you know, like say, like Gates would probably be better at uh, you know sort of raw engineering and technology than Jobs, but not as good on aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This section of the video Elon Musk discusses the importance of attracting and motivating great people in order to create a successful company. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, for, for all of these guys, they're obviously very driven um, and they're very talented. Um, and uh, yeah, and they're able to attract great people to build a company. Um, but but I mean, it, it, the, this, the, like the, the ability to attract and motivate great people is critical to the success of a company because a company is just, that's, it's a group of people that are assembled to create a product or service. That's the purpose of a company. Um, people sometimes forget this elementary truth. Um, and so if, uh, you know, if, if you're able to get great people to join the company and work together towards a common goal and, uh, and you sort of have a relentless sense of perfection about that goal, then you will end up with a great product. And if you have a great product, lots of people will buy it. <laughs> and then the company will be successful. Yeah. But really, it's pretty straightforward, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the reason for it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I, fear, I feel fear quite strongly. Uh, but I, um, if, the, if, if what we're doing is if what, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not as though I don't feel, I feel it qu like more strongly than I would like. And in uh, which areas would you never go full risk if you still are fearful? Uh, w well, it really depends on the stakes. If the stakes are high, if, if it's really important, then what should, then I, you know, will overcome the fear and just do it anyway. Um, but essentially, I mean, I just drive overrides fear, but I feel the fear. It's kind of annoying. I wish I didn't. Okay. I wish I felt it less. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah. And these all these introspective questions are uh, interesting. I don't get to ask these very often. Um, and then, like, I, I'm trying to think, like, what is like an an, an accurate reply? And so, some of these, it's like I don't, it's hard to evaluate yourself on these things. Yeah. Um, Which company you founded uh, was the most risky at the start? Well, probably SpaceX. Uh, I thought it had the lowest chance of success. Uh, I mean, I thought both Tesla and SpaceX would fail at the beginning. You, know? you, you saw it? Yeah, so, sure. Really? Of course. But nevertheless, you put all your money in that. I expected to lose it. Uh, well, technically, <laughs> what I, I thought was, well, I'll take half the money from PayPal, and if I lose half of it, that's okay. Um, uh, but then, of course, the companies encounter difficulties, and then I have a choice of either the, let the company die um, or put, you know, all the money into the companies. And so, I really didn't want the companies to die, so I put all the money in the companies. Yeah. And then had to borrow money from friends to pay living expenses. Yes. What was your best idea ever? My best idea ever? Yeah. This is tricky. I, I suppose um, coming to North America was my best idea. Okay. Because I think these things would not have been accomplished, um, in a, you know, almost anywhere else. It's really hard to start a company, uh, but you know, and particularly. California Silicon Valley is very conducive to startup companies, um, and uh, yeah, and so yeah, uh, you know, whenever I'd read books in South Africa, it would seem like the cutting edge of technology was in Silicon Valley, and so that, that's when I wanted to come and mm. I wanted to move move to this mythical place. Okay. And are there things you regret having done or for not having done so far? Well, there's, there's lots of things that, you know, when life is short and there's lots of things that 
could be done that one can't necessarily do. Um, and these really are introspective questions. Um, I think, no, I mean, I mean, overall, I think I'm pretty, pretty happy with uh, what, what you know, where things are. It's hard not to be, honestly. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'd be, yeah. Um, yeah. Things are in a good place right now, um, and uh, I mean, I'd like to, it, looking ahead, make, I'd like to see um, humanity go beyond Earth and mm -hmm. have people on Mars. That would be really great. Um, and to see widespread adoption of electric vehicles and uh, renewable energy. These are great things. And uh, yeah, I think those would be really, really cool. Um, 